Uh, it is my great pleasure to give a talk here, uh, especially when I realize that uh, I'm the only local speaker not affiliated with uh, City University. I want to thank David and Ron for your invitation and uh, hospitality. Okay. Uh, I also want to apologize for missing yesterday's activities because I just came back yesterday evening from mainland China. And I trust that uh, yesterday's activities were very interesting and uh, stimulating. Okay. Now, uh, today I'm going to introduce a systematic framework for design a distributed control law for multi-agent system. So the presentation is based on a joint research with some of my PhD students, Yu Feng, He Chai, Yi Dong, Wei Liu, and Tong Liu, and has been supported by two research grants. So the outline of my talk is shown here. I will start from introducing the background and motivation of the problem. Then I will give a precise formulation of the control of multi-agent systems. Then after reviewing what is called decentralized control, I will pro present a framework for designing a distributed control law based on a decentralized control law and a so-called adaptive distributed observer. Then we will illustrate our design by a synchronization problem of multiple robot manipulators. Finally, we will close the talk by some remarks. So it has been observed that many living beings tend to perform collective behaviors. Some examples include school of fish, flocking of birds, and a swarm of locusts, as shown in these figures. It is also known that the collective behaviors of living beings would require communication among the agents, also the coordinated decision. Okay. So the collective behaviors of living beings have motivated many engineering applications, such as coordination of worship, formation of spacecrafts, formation of flights, as shown in these figures. These engineering applications have in turn given birth to the topic of control of multi-agent systems. To introduce the concept of multi-agent system control, let us first recall the classic control described by this block diagram, where the control law will take the full information from the sensor and the, the reference signal to control the plant. Such a control scheme is called centralized control. In contrast, a multi-agent system consists of n individual subsystems. Each subsystem has its own input and output. The key feature of the of this control is that suppose the control of every plant can access the reference signal. Then for each plant, we can design a control law which depends on the output of itself and the reference input. Okay, so this kind of, of, of control is called decentralized control. The key feature of the decentralized control is that there is no cooperation among all the subsystems. Okay. However, in reality, a multiple a multi agent system has many subsystems. Typically, Due to the communication constraint, not every follower can access the information of the reference input. Therefore, decentralized control in general does not work. In order to deal with the communication constraints, we further introduce the so-called 
distributed control. As you can see, the key feature of the distributed control is that for each subsystem, the control will not only depend on its own output, but also the outputs of its neighbors. Here, the label of a set is a subset of all subsystems determined by the so-called communication network, which will be defined later more precisely. In summary, the control law for a multi-agent system is subject to various communication constraints. A control law that satisfies the communication constraints is called a distributed control law. The cooperative control is to design a distributed control for a multi-agent system to achieve a global objective such as consensus, synchronization, formation, etc. So in this talk, we will present a framework for synthesizing a distributed control law based on a decentralized control law and the adaptive distributed observer, which will be defined later precisely. Okay. Now we will give a formulation of multi-agent control system. Here we are given a quite general nonlinear plant where XI, UI, EI, YI are the state control input, performance output, and the measurement output respectively. W is an uncertain parameter vector. V is the reference signal, which is supposed to be generated by a linear XO system as follows. Here, S and F are two constant matrices. This system, together with this system, can be viewed as a multi-agent system with n plus one agents, where this system is considered as a leader system, and the n subsystems of this system are considered as n followers of the multi-agent systems. As we pointed out before, the control law for multi-agent system is subject to failures communication constraints. A control law that satisfies the communication constraint is called distributed control law. In order to precisely define a distributed control law, we need to introduce some terminology of the communication graph. Given the multi-agent system one and two, we can define a communication graph G with V the node set and the E the edge set. Here V consists of n plus one elements with the node zero associated with the leader system, and then the other n nodes associated with the n followers of the plant. For any t greater than or equal to zero, an edge set contains an edge from J to I if and only if the control UI of the subsystem I can access YJ at a time t. J is said to be a label of I at a time t. We define the label set of load I as follows. We call the graph static if it is time invariant. Okay. Now, if the edge set contains a subset of this form, then we call this subset as a directed path from I1 to IK at the time t. The graph is said to be connected at the time t if there is a directed path from the node zero to every other node at the time t. So this graph figure shows a connected graph because from node zero, we have a direct path to every other node. Okay. Now having defined the graph, we can further catalyze our distributed control law, which is given by these two equations, where G, I, K, I are some sufficient smooth functions. As you can see, this control law, for each I, this control law depends on Y, J, Z, J at the time T, if and only if J is a label of the node I. Therefore, this is a 
tribute controller. Now, of course, this controller is quite general, okay? Maybe more general than you have seen before, okay? Now we can precisely define our problem. Given the problem, that the XLC and then the graph, find a distributed control law such that for any initial condition, the solution of the closed loop system is bounded, and then the error output approach zero asymptotically. Okay. So the degree of the difficulty of the problem not only depends on the dynamics of the system, but also the property of the graph. So a graph can be static or time varying. If it is time varying, then it may satisfy various conditions such as every time connected, frequently connected, or jointly connected. Due to the time limit, we will not give you precise definition of these terminologies. The important thing here to note is that among all these conditions, the jointly connected condition is most uh, challenging because under this condition, the graph can be disconnected every time. As a result, the cost number system is discontinuous. Okay. Now we will further show you what is decentralized control mathematically. Okay. Now let us first focus a special case where there is only one single system. In this case, the problem reduces to the so-called classical output regulation problem, where we are given a nonlinear plant and an XOR system. We need to design a control law such that the cross loop system has two properties. Number one, all the solutions is globally bounded. Number two, the tracking error will approach zero asymptotically. Okay. So this problem handles asymptotical tracking and the disturbance rejection simultaneously, where the weather input and the disturbance are generated by the autonomous system of this form. The problem has been well studied for a few decades by basically two approaches. One is called heat of water control, the other is called internal model control. Okay. Now, today we only focus on the heat of water control. Typically, a for the controller is of the following form. Under this control law, the cross loop system takes this form. Now you can easily see that the control has to rely on the fit forward signal. Okay. In particular here, we know that this control law has to depend on the state and then the system dynamics of the leader system. So this is a key. Okay. Now, first we assume for every I, you I can access the leader's information. Then the output regulation problem of the multi-agent system can be solved by the following controller. In fact, all you need to do is to repeat the design of the centralized control by n times. Then you go on this controller. Okay, very simple, straightforward. Okay. We call this control law purely decentralized or simply decentralized since there is no cooperation among all the control law, right? No co cooperation. Nevertheless, this control law is feasible only if all followers can access the state and the system dynamics of the leader system. Okay. So this uh, design scheme can also be Inactuated by this diagram, okay, where the leader system produces the state and system dynamics to each follower. Okay, then you simply repeat the design method for centralized control n times. That's all. Okay. Nevertheless, as we mentioned before, for a multi agent system, we cannot assume that every follower can access the information of the leader. To overcome this difficulty, we further propose the dis distributed control. There are a lot of ways to design a distributed control law. Many ways are kind of very technical based on some art instead of uh, science. Okay, so here we will present a framework. Then we will design distributed control law based on 
the everybody knows decentralized control is a so-called adaptive distributed observer. Now, how come we will present uh, this framework? First, we observe that the, the problem is solvable by a decentralized control if all the followers can access V and S. So one may wonder whether or not there is some distributed dynamic compensator that can estimate V and S and pass them to the followers. If yes, then we say that the, the distributed dynamic compensator is a distributed observer if it's able to estimate V, or it's called adaptive distributed observer if it's able to estimate both V and S. So this is our idea. Okay. Now, suppose we have already had a decentralized control and also have a nice creature called adaptive distributed observer. Then, by composing the decentralized control law and then the observer for the easy system, then we can obtain a so called distributed observer based control law. Okay. Now, if a distributed observer based control law can achieve what are the decentralized control law 5K? Because these are two different control law, right? Then we say that this control law satisfy the certainty equivalence principle. Okay. So in reality, there are two probability. One is certainty equivalence principle hold, the other is it does not hold. Okay. So this scheme can also be illustrated by this problem diagram where we employ a so-called distributed observer. This distributed observer will produce n pairs of outputs. Each pair will approach the state and the system dynamics of the leader system and provide it to the observer based controller. Asymptotically, this scheme will approach the decentralized control scheme. Okay. Nevertheless, in order for this scheme to work, we still need to address two technical issues. Number one, whether or not such an observer exists. Number two, whether or not the certainty equivalent principle holds. In fact, for linear time invariant systems subject to static and connected graph, an adaptive distributed observer always exists. And then the certainty equivalence principle always holds. Actually, this is due to the well known uh, separation principle of linear time invariant system. However, for non linear system or time varying system, a distributed observer may not exist. Even if it exists, the certainty equivalence principle may not hold due to, say, finite escape time or peaking phenomena. Okay. Now, to address the first issue, we first propose a so-called adaptive distributed observer candidate described as follows. Okay. So this candidate will be further called adaptive distributed observer if for all i. Si and eta i will approach s and v asymptotically. Okay. Now, uh, whether or not this compensator is an adaptive distributed observer depends on both the dynamics of the leader and the property of the graph. Okay. It turns out that for many interesting cases, an adaptive distributed observer indeed exists. Here we just uh, show you one result. Suppose none of the major S has positive wheel pass, and then the graph G is Generally connected. Then, for any initial condition, the solution of an of an observer exists, and the SI and the eta I approach S and the V exponentially. Okay. Now, of course, we also have some special cases here. Okay. Now, as we pointed out before, when we have a decentralized control law and an adaptive this 
should be observed at the hand. Then we can compose you two guys together to obtain the following so-called adaptive distributed observer-based controller. This controller consists of two parts. So here, the second part is the adaptive distributed observer. And then the first part is obtained from the decentralized controller by replacing V with eta i, S with Si. Then we obtain a so-called distributed controller, because you can check that it satisfies the certainty, uh, uh, it satisfies the communication constraints. OK, so this proposition addresses the first issue. So we still need to address the second issue. Whether or not this control law satisfies the certainty equivalence principle. So doing so needs to overcome three difficulties, the nonlinearity and the uncertainty of the systems, and then the discontinuity of the cross-loop system, since the graph G can be discontinuous at every uh, moment. Okay. Now, due to the time limit, we cannot give you all the details. I just give you a summary of what we have done in weeks and days. So we have solved the need following consensus problem for multiple uncertain Euro Lagrange system. Also, cooperative output regulation for linear multi agent systems. Adaptive need following consensus for uncertain nonlinear multi agent systems. Also, we deal with cooperative output regulation for discrete time linear multi agent system. Connectivity preserving Rutherford's forking problem. Cooperative output regulation for multi agent systems with unknown control uh, detections. Okay. So next I will show you an example, the so-called synchronization of multiple robot manipulators. Here we are given a group of two link manipulators, each of which is shown in this uh, figure. So it is a two link manipulators. The motion equations of the manipulator is shown here, which is a so-called Euler Lagrange system with various quantities as shown here. Our objective is to design a distributed control law so that the four manipulators swing periodically between jet chest A and the jet chest B. Okay. For this purpose, we introduce a legal signal of this form, which can be generated by a leader system with S, F, V of zero given as follows. So you can see that the, the reference signal is a periodic function. Okay. To make our problem more interesting, we assume our graph is a switching graph, which is disconnected at every time. Nevertheless, you can check that the, this graph satisfies the so-called jointly connected condition. Okay. So this animation shows the performance of our controller, where the, the red one is the leader, the four blue ones are the followers. As you can see, they can synchronize pretty quickly. Okay. Now we will conclude our talk with a few remarks. So this talk has presented a framework for synthesizing a distributed control law by composing a decentralized control law and an adaptive distributed observer based on the certainty equivalence principle. The decentralized control law can be obtained using the classical control methods, assuming every follower knows the information of the leader. The adaptive distributed observer provides the estimated state and dynamics of the leader to every follower distributively. Okay. 
So the framework has applied to the cooperative output regulation problem for general linear multi-agent system and the consensus problem of some nonlinear systems, such as Eura Lagrange system and the rigid body system. Thank you, finally. Thank you for the talk, and thank you for leaving two minutes uh, for us to ask questions. So we have time. Any questions? <coughs> Maybe I ask the first one, uh, very simple. Uh, now you assume that uh, everyone can estimate the states uh, of the labels. Mm -hmm. Now what if uh, the estimation is a higher dimensional, and you can just est you, you are able to estimate just part of it, some components of it, but not the full state. Uh, in that case, uh, can you combine uh, the output feedback? Actually, uh, this design framework has nothing to do with the number of the agents. Uh, not, not the number of agents, yeah. but for each agent. Uh, yeah. uh, when you do estimation, you yeah. estimate the state information. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I if the communication channel is uh, uh, more than one, but you can estimate only one channel, but not two or three channels. As you can see, the structure of the observer. Okay, for each so eye, it takes the information of all its neighbors. Yeah, that, that's my question. Yeah. Uh, well if you can only get part of it, not all. It doesn't it. matter. If, as long as the figure, the graph is generally connected, as long as okay. it works. Okay, it, it, you don't have to take all the information. However, usually we, we assume that we don't know how many neighbors we have. Okay. Okay, therefore we cannot just pick up a few, a few neighbors. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> One more question. Some of my students uh, may ask some questions. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you know <laughs> the details, right? <laughs> They don't want to give you shovel. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, you can turn on the speaker. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I'm wondering if there is some new directions to improve our adaptive distributed observer. Actually, there are a lot of things that I don't have time to talk. For example, here we assume the uh, linear system is linear. So we can also estimate it to nonlinear linear system. We have not considered time uh, delay and the communication delay. We can also take into account these uh, things. Okay, there are a lot of things that we can talk. We, we can do in the future. Okay, okay. thank you. Mm. Okay, uh, Larry. Oh, uh, I, I know you set up a very general system, mm -hmm. but where do you have in mind? Maybe you haven't considered where in the real world mm -hmm. most likely this theory may apply to a real system. Very good, very good question. Yeah, very good question. Yes, uh, <laughs> very good question. Uh, so far, actually, I, I, I have to admit that so far, all my theory has been tested by computer simulation. I haven't done any real applications. Yeah, but yeah. I'm just, I know you haven't. Yeah. Where is most likely you think this Yeah, okay. Actually, uh, last month, I attended the Chinese Control Conference. One colleague from Tianjin University told me that he is using my method to do the uh, unmanned uh, aircraft, uh, unmanned vehicle uh, formation control. Okay. The guy from Tianjin okay, University. thank you again. Uh, let's mm. send the speaker again. Mm.